everybody, this is Perch, and uh, I just, it, what, something that just dawned on me is that uh, I've recorded a lot of these videos in the car, uh, but as I'm heading into Texas spring and soon Texas summer, we had our first 90 degree day here, the uh, air conditioning is going to start to defeat the recording of these videos, so you're going to get better audio, or, or really, really bad audio, we'll see where it goes, uh, based on kind of how I'm able to drive around and, you know, the sound of the air conditioning coming in, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Ah, Texas, how delightful your summer will be. Um, anyway, uh, you know what's the worst, actually, and, and I know I'm just, just uh, stalling out on the video here a little bit, but that's why some of you come to this channel, right? Uh, probably not. Uh, but a dry heat is way better than a humid heat. I think I think I used to uh, spend a decent amount of time in Orlando. Uh, draw your own conclusions, what I was doing down there. But anyway, that location in the summer, when it's like mid-90s to 100, and the humidity is like 90%, uh, that is misery right there. The, so far, what I've gotten in this area of Texas is it's, uh, it's hot weather, but it's dry weather. And that's, a, that's an entirely different ballgame. But anyway, so uh, I got this question over the phone. And this is, so this is not a, a normal Perch viewer mail question. It's a Perch talking to somebody on the phone. They asked this question. I thought this is a question I want to do a video about. Um, and basically, the, the conversation, the question went, um, how many people need to be fired? at the big two. And uh, this is something that I see people from time to time, uh, you know, they'll, they'll say in the comments that I'm a, a shill for the big two, which always confuses me, to be honest. And, and unfortunately, a bunch of people are doing Mumbles' gimmick of uh, kind of fake clowning on the channel. So I can't tell if somebody's being a, you know, obtuse asshole or if they're actually, you know, actually saying this stuff in, uh, as a joke. I can't tell. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, I always struggle with that one. If you think this channel is a shill for the big two, like I, I, I do not know what to tell you there. That's a, that's a very weird criticism um, in my book. But if you're asking me how many people should be fired at the big two, well, you know, uh, let me approach this from how many people at the top versus how many people at the bottom or in the middle. Because I think those are two very different things, and I'll explain why. To me, the people at the top is the bigger, um, is the easier one to kind of talk about. And my answer there is pretty much everyone. And I say that not from a position of hatred. I say it from a very cold, very calculating position of, uh, look, in most companies, you know, actual companies where you've got C-level executive suite and other things, if you had the kind of performance numbers, lack of connection. So the biggest damning thing to me with the comic book industry is that the big two, Marvel, DC, have allowed uh, outside parties, meaning Scholastic, uh, certainly manga, other places to come in and at the top level take their spot. Now, I, I tried to wade into the argument. Thankfully, the majority of people got it. But, you know, if, if you're saying that manga is beating Western comics, uh, you know, you got to just make that question a little bit more complicated if you're going to answer it correctly. The top of manga is beating the top of Western comics. That is true. It's factually true by the numbers. Likewise, Scholastic and other things, the top of that stuff is also beating Western comics. Not everything, but the top stuff are. And in this particular discussion, that means that if you're an executive, your goal is to create hits. Now, no company is going to judge you on everything. In many cases, it's the uh, shots on goal mentality. How many shots are you uh, taking? And if you're taking 10 shots then you're expecting one of them to be a hit. If it's a big hit, then, you know, you're, you're golden. Life's going to be good and people will love you and, and you're going to get promoted. If you take one shot and miss that one shot, you're going to get fired. If you take 100 shots and you get one shot successful, you're probably going to get fired. So it's just the ratio of, of how you do it. So from that perspective, um, not because of, you know, what somebody said on Twitter or not any of the rest, I purely numbers and business at the top of the comic book companies, the people who are in the leadership positions, it is a performance-based job. The metrics have to be strong. And that's how most companies operate. You know, you come in, if you look at uh, any kind of pharmaceutical company, any kind of retail company, you get somebody to, you know, look like what? There's uh, the woman who is currently the CEO of Kohl's. So Kohl's is a you know department store, big box store, everything else. She came in and she did a couple things right away in her tenure that boosted sales. She did a partnership with Amazon where people could return stuff to the store. And this had a, you know, side effect of getting people to buy stuff while they're there. 
and her numbers boosted right out the gate. And she got a huge bonus and life was good and everybody was very happy and, you know, she was doing a great job. And then, uh, you know, two, three years passed and she didn't build on that success. And even though the company was bringing in dollars and there was some success there, unfortunately, the growth stalled out and it, it's, you know, it started to plateau. And now it's quite likely the board is going to ask her to leave. And this is all played out over like five years. I, I, mean, I may not have the timing exactly right, but a very short time frame, this is all played out. That's the way the executive suite at these companies operates and frankly, how they're supposed to operate. They're supposed to be very, very quick, very abrupt. You come in, you drive value, you get value, you get rewarded, or you don't prove your value, you get axed. In most cases, Didio you know, was recently removed. A lot of the executive you know, team members inside the big two have been there for a while. And again, they've allowed, I mean, you could go down the list. They have not capitalized on a renewed interest in superheroes, meaning the movies are making a billion dollars, comic books have not followed suit. They have not been able to significantly grow the licensing. While the licensing for comic book properties are is strong right now, again, purely by numbers, when I say that it's not an opinion, like I don't think it's strong or who wants to buy a, a shirt with the Flash logo on it because that's too woke or whatever is going on in your head, the pure numbers, the pure annual report numbers, licensing business is strong. However, and this is a big catch, the strength is coming from the movie business licensing, not the comics. Now you can say that the movies came from the comics, except that's not how the business is going to assess and analyze that stuff. They're gonna they're gonna give that success to the movie business and the studios, not the actual comics themselves. So from that standpoint, again, this is Im it, it, largely emotionless. Doesn't matter what you said on Twitter. Doesn't matter how you know where you are in the woco meter. Um, you have not driven financial value at an executive level. You're paid, you know, high six figures in some cases, seven figures, and at least one case, eight figures for your role, that is a pretty dog eat dog world. You didn't make it. So I would largely replace the vast majority of the comic book leadership of the big two. Now I realize I'm a gigantic shill for the big two. And, and so this is apparently some way that I am somehow shilling for the people who run it, but that's, uh, that's what I would do. When you get to the lower level, mid-level, I think it becomes more complicated. I know the tempting thing that people like to say is a fire everybody, but the reality is there's a lot of people behind the scenes that we you know, are not seeing. We don't know how they're doing. And they may be doing their job well. They may be doing their job poorly. They may be doing their job poorly, but their leadership is so inept and terrible that if they would had better leadership, they'd do their job well. I don't know. They're going to have to do a case-by-case -case basis. Some of the people, particularly around editorial, um, I, you know, I, me being, you know, fair-minded perch, I would probably go through there and at least validate that you didn't have, you know, an editor trying to, to manage like 32 books with no support. Uh, that that's a, a lesson for failure. So I, I would assess the people there and say, okay, who's doing the job well? And and by the way, again, the, the knee-jerk reaction people like to say is like, oh. You know, everybody sucks. Everybody should be fired. But clearly that's not the case because the businesses, both of them, are still profitable. They are. So that indicates that despite whatever ineptness that's going on in different parts of the organization, there are a couple people there who are keeping the lights on. It would be important to find those people and retain them. However, there's other people who have actively, you know, hurt the business, who have actively kind of driven it off a cliff. I think there's some people who are apathetic to it or basically in the job until, you know, the discovery merger comes along and, you know, they, they figure I'm going to get a payout. So I'll just kind of try and hang in there until I get my check. Those people need to be terminated immediately. There's nothing I hate more than, well, that's not true. I hate lots of things more, but I do, I do thoroughly despise the people who phone it in because it's like they're apathetic about their job. That, that irks me to no end. It drives me crazy. Either you come in, you do the job to the best of your ability or you get out. I, I, I get, if you think if you're in an awful job and you're being paid very little, you better have a pretty damn good reason. Like you can't get any other job. You're taking care of a sick grandma. I don't know what it happens to be, but there's no excuse for you to just continue to sit in a desk and collect a check for doing nothing. That's, that's garbage. You should come in and try and do the job to the best of your ability, regardless if the company is insane or not. If it is insane, go get another job, work very hard. 
And I, again, you, you know, everybody has to afford rent. So if you're, you know, affording rent, why you look for another job? Fine. But some of these people have been around eight to 10 years. If the company was insane and bad and eight to 10 years later, they're still there. Well, okay. Now you're, you know, you, you clearly are unemployable. If, if that's <laughs> some people are going to say I'm way too harsh. Some people say I'm not harsh enough. That's the magic of being perched. Some people say Perch says he's too harsh. Some people say Perch is not hard enough. I say people are both too hard and too easy on Perch. The end. Thanks for listening. No, wouldn't it be funny if I ended the video there? Anyway, I, I think that there's a combination. I think the real, the real magic and, and the real tough part of leadership, leadership is hard. That's why, you get, that's why they pay you money. In theory, there are definitely some people who are in leadership making big checks who do not you know, earn their money, and that's a different problem. But for the moment, let's assume that, you know, you're going to have a leadership team and you're going to replace them and you're going to get people in there who are worth the salaries you're paying them. Well, I think one of the tough jobs is that they need to dig in and they need to figure out, you know, who are the people who are doing a good job? Who are the people who have the capability of doing a good job, but they've been held back? And how do I remove the things that are holding them back? I think that's what leadership's all about. So anyway, I, but I... <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people who just hear the beginning and, and call it a day there. Yeah, a lot of the top leadership should be replaced. And I'm sure a lot of the top leadership are wonderful, magical people. They're very nice. They, uh, they can draw well or they're good, they're good folks. Whatever it happens to be, I'm sure they are and more power to them. However, you know, if it's an individual contributor, I mean, I mean the guy to pick on that I, I do from time to time is Jim Lee. Guy can draw like a magician. He is amazing. Still can. He puts out great work. Jim Lee should be an individual contributor, paid a huge salary to draw those images and be that evangelist and do what he does. Jim Lee, as the uh, CEO, kind of manager of a company, no. I, I mean, you're, you're fundamentally failing at that role. Even if all the incompetence is happening below him, that excuse only works for a small amount of time. And then eventually, you're the incompetent for keeping those people in their positions. That's I, I, just the way it goes. So that's, that's what I mean by, and, and be careful. This is one of the things, this is almost like management leadership 101. Be careful of promoting the great individual contributor into a leadership role, because that individual contributor may be exactly where they should be. They may be in the perfect spot where they can drive value, where they can you know do what they do great. And the, it's the second you give them management, you mess it up because they're not built to be managers. They're built to be people who can kind of just contribute. There's plenty of people in the world like that. Keep them in their lane, pay them more. There's plenty of companies that they, they kind of dictate salaries around management. And those companies are screwing themselves because they take perfectly good people and they put them into roles that they are not qualified to have. And it messes it all up. But anyway, there you go. There's my, uh, there's my rant for the day. One of three rants for the day, I guess, is a better way to put it. And thanks for listening.